increasingly deploying digital certificates and encryption technologies. These security assets are often becoming lost, stolen, and unaccounted for, according to a new report from data security firm Venify. Digital certificates and encryption keys are critical to information security programs, but can become a serious liability if they go missing. Uh, there is evidence that stolen digital certificates even played a role in the now infamous Stuxnet attack. I recently sat down with Jeff Hudson, CEO of Venify, to talk about the benefits and dangers of digital certificates and best practices for managing them. Thanks for joining us, Jeff. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. So give us a, a quick overview. Uh, what are digital certificates used for and uh, why are they so important to information security programs? So a digital certificate is like a kind of like a driver's license for an application or a server. It authenticates or it identifies the entity that has that certificate. And the way it kind of works is you authorize these things and then you can renew them as they expire over time. But they become something that other applications use to authenticate and say, I know who that is. Like if I looked at your driver's license, I'd say, I know who you are. If I knew what the money said, I know who you are. Mm -hmm. And then we could communicate because we have some kind of trust between us. The other thing they're used for is to then, once that trust is established, is to encrypt the traffic between them. So they're really important in computing because they establish trust between applications and devices and other applications. And then they encrypt and keep secret the transmissions between them. So the reason that's so important is because if you're a server, you wanna know other servers who you're communicating with so you know they're not gonna hurt you. And you wanna be able to keep secrets and not have everybody look at what's going between. So does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so it, in the Benefi uh, survey, um, which um, surveyed 471 managers and C-level executives. 51% uh, of respondents had experienced lost or stolen, um, unaccounted for digital certificates. Tell me what the problem is here. Why are they so frequently being lost and stolen? So maybe an analogy to describe the issue or the problem. If you go down to any one of the big Wall Street banks and you walk in the bank, they go to great lengths to know who walks through the front door, who gets in the elevators, who gets off on what floors, who goes behind what doors. So they really spend a lot of time tracking who's in the building, right? And they know exactly who's in the building at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. On networks, based on the survey, what we heard is 50% or greater than 50% of the people have unaccounted for certificates. So if a certificate is to kind of like a server, like an employee, ID badges to an employee, you've got all these unaccounted for servers or certificates in an organization. The problem with that is who's doing what? Who's authenticating themselves? Who's saying that they're okay to be here when they're not accounted for? Mm -hmm. So this unaccounted nature, this unaccounted piece is, is really problematic. Right, well, what other dangers could, um, could it cause? Right, so imagine that if in this building that we talked about on Wall Street, there was two or 3,000 people that they didn't know about, and they would be on the trading floor, and they'd be with customer information, they'd be with financial records, et cetera, what could they do? Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing with servers. And the thing is that people don't spend the time, nearly the time, to know what's on their network as they do to know the people that are in their building. And when we go in and start talking to customers and we help them discover all these certificates on their networks, a lot of times we'll say, how many do you think you have? They'll say, we think we have 4,000. Then we'll do the network discovery and we'll find out they have 6,000. So they have 6,000 certificates or 2,000 certificates on their network that they didn't even know were there. And that's a problem because that means that those certificates are acting like valid, authenticated, authorized devices and applications in that network. So let your imagination run wild. Stuxnet's a great right. example. Uh, so bringing it into the real world, uh, tell me how uh, digital certificates uh, played a role in uh, the Stuxnet attack. So the Stuxnet malware was a package that contained some different pieces. And one of them was a certificate that the malware installed on the network and authenticated the malware when the device was on to the rest of the network. Wow, that's really scary. It really is. 
was. And so what it did was then it went and messed around with the machinery that was creating the enriched uranium in that nuclear processing facility. So you can imagine that once something like that becomes well known and that kind of a methodology of that vector of attack becomes well known, it's going to be perpetrated by many, many more going forward. So get in the network, authenticate yourself, and then do whatever you want. Interesting. Uh, so tell Does us that scare you a little? It, a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, so tell us some uh, best practices for um, encryption and certificate management. So for certificates, there's, um, there's three or four things that people need to do to keep their network secure with regards to certificates. One is they always need to know what certificates are on their network and authorized and valid. Uh, the second thing they need to do is continually update that information so they can tell when new ones show up. So just not a point in time, but on an ongoing basis, find out what new certificates are on the network and make sure that they're authorized. Um, the other thing that people are doing and or need to do more and more, and some of them are doing, is to automate the processes of installing certificates on various machines. And there's two reasons for that. One is if you ask people to do it, um, you have to expose the private key to that certificate to the individual. Mm -hmm. And once they have the private key, there's a lot of different things that they can do, like they can actually steal the certificate or use it in other ways. So if you automate that process, you take the people away from having to manipulate the private keys. And then the other thing to do is just automate the whole process because it's error prone if people do it. So uh, we know one company that had to uh, install certificates in over 2,000 of their stores. This is a big retailer. Four certificates per store. It takes about four hours per certificate. Mm -hmm. Do the math, that's probably about eight million years of effort. If it's all automated, then they, that can happen inside of literally hours, not you know, years. So that's one of the other best practices. And the, the follow-on effect of that is if it is under automation, and one of them gets compromised, or all of them get compromised, you can switch them out pretty easy. You have to do that manually, and like in the case of this slow retail, it can take years. Right. All right, well thanks for going over this. It's been an interesting discussion, and um, thanks for going over the best practices as well. Well, thank you, Angela. And thanks to you for watching. Have a great day.